Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at this card game here, Tembo. In this game, the players are going to be attempting to get their animals across the river without having them be attacked by crocodiles or lions, and you are going to have a hand of cards, you're going to be playing cards from your hand in order to set up different groups of animals, and then get them across the river safely, scoring points for the ones that do. Very simple concept. Let me show you how it works. We'll come on back after that and I'll tell you if it's a fun, engaging card game. To set up the game, the players are going to be given a hand of five cards, making sure they have no lions in their opening hand. And then we are going to place out five cards face down, representing the river crossings in the game. To play, each player on their turn is going to play one of three kinds of cards. So the first thing you can do is you can play a hoofed animal to a river crossing. If it's empty, like they are at the beginning, the number on it won't matter. It can be as high as you want it to be, and you are immediately going to mark it with a cube of your color to let everyone know that is my animal. And then you replenish your hand from the deck, checking to see if it's a lion, because they have to be dealt with immediately, all right? If you are playing to a place that already has some cards, however, then you have to make sure that the cards you are playing are higher than the ones that are already there. So the seven can be played on top of the three or anywhere else, obviously, because they're empty, and that's fine. However, if the seven was already here, the three cannot go on top of it. The numbers must ascend as you are playing them into the game. So this player would do that. They would mark their card like so, and they would draw a new card. You are even allowed to play more than one hoofed animal. You can play two of them if the numbers are sequential. So for example, this player here, could play the 22 there, followed immediately by the 23, marking both and drawing two cards to complete the round again, checking for lions, because if you draw a lion, you have to deal with it immediately. The other kinds of cards that you can play, uh, let's say this player played here instead of where they played originally, which is fine because the numbers are still ascending. Then you can also, uh, besides playing the hoofed, hoofed animals here, you play a, 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 an elephant. And if you play an elephant, there must be, you pick which river crossing you are affecting with the elephant, you'll remove it from the play, and you are going to uh, make sure that there's at least three animals there, it has to be three, and they will cross the river. In this case, if I play there, then I am going to have all of these animals cross the river and each player would get their cards their tokens back and put the cards that they crossed into their scoring pile. So this player would get that one and the blue player would get both of these into their scoring pile. And that player that played the elephant is going to replenish their hand. That was uh, me. Yes, I replenish my hand and that's it. The other kind of card is the crocodile. When you play a crocodile, it is going to eat either all, you pick the place it affects, it eats all of the marked animals, it shows you the kind of animal on the crocodile, or the first card at, in the line. It doesn't matter what it is in that case, or all of the other kind. And there's a crocodile for each kind of hoofed animal in the game. Besides that, there is one card, which is the super croc, and that one eats everything at that spot. So it won't matter what the kinds of animals are, it'll eat all of them. And then besides that, as I said, you have the lions. And every time you draw a lion, you are going to pick a river crossing. It's going to cover that river crossing, uh, rendering it inactive, and it eats everything that is waiting there as well. All those cards removed, and everyone gets their cubes back. From that point on, you no longer play cards there. The game is going to continue until you've run out the deck. Players continue playing out their hands until someone can no longer play, and then the game is over. Anything that does not cross and anything still in your hand won't affect the game at that point, and you are gonna, going to count up your victory points on your cards. You uh, write that down, you shuffle up and play through it again a second time, and then you add up the score from the first round to your second round. Highest score is the winner of the game. And that's it for this one. That's how you play Tembo. All right, so there it is. Before I dive into my target audience system here, I do want to mention that I find the game to be just okay, ultimately, for me. It's a game that I think is uh, overall a nicely put together package, but the game play left me feeling largely unexcited. It is not a captivating play. It is not a game that I once finished playing felt myself thinking about, for one thing, 
but I also felt that not a lot, not a lot happened in the game. You know, it unfortunately does not have peaks and valleys. It's sort of, um, it's, it's clever and cute enough. And there are no moments that stand out as exciting, particularly. Uh, that's kind of how I felt about it. So let's talk about this. Okay. So thematic ties. I like the theme here. It's a nice theme. It's, uh, this idea of getting your animals across the river is clever. It's cute. And it definitely ties into the card play very well. Uh, the only thing that clearly feels abstracted is the number system doesn't make any sense thematically, but it's not a big deal. I, I always ignore that kind of thing anyway. It doesn't bother me. Having the lions, having the crocodiles, that's that's a neat um, thematic touch. So it works. Aesthetics, I think, are the best thing in this game. The game looks beautiful. The artwork is fantastic. The animals, the, the, the setting, it's all very beautifully illustrated and done. The river on the backs of the cards, it's its a nice one. It's a very good looking game. The replayability and scalability here, I think is not, not very high. The replayability, you're gonna be doing what you do because you drew the cards that you drew and you'll play whatever you can when you can, you know? The replayability I don't find to be captivating. This is not one I'm sure I'll be coming back to, you know? It doesn't grab me to come back. There's, there's, it's the same sort of, ho-hum gameplay ultimately uh game length is fine um playing through the deck twice does feel final though you know what i mean and i almost wish that the deck was slightly larger and you played through it once and then it might leave me with that feeling of let's do that again as opposed to most games that force you to play through a deck more than once sometimes you get that fatigue of playing through it again, you know what I mean? And this one, after the second round, I am definitely ready to be done. The ease of play, if there's any fiddliness, design choices, anything like that that are weird, no, I think it's fine. I think the iconography here works. I think the um, the arranging the cards is just about the only mechanical thing you really need to remember. Everything else makes sense thematically. The lion's gonna mess up a whole river crossing. Crocodiles do their thing. They have a nice icon there to remind you that all works well, and I enjoy that. The only thing that I think is a little bit fiddly is having to remember to put a cube on every card you play. Every card you play, grab a cube, put a cube on there. Um, which I cannot think of a better system to do that, but it is still a little fiddly. And then largely, uh, and then lastly, I'm sorry, uh, tactics and strategy and luck and so on. This game has a lot of luck. What you draw is what you can do. You have a hand of cards that doesn't allow for a lot of variability, you know. It's okay. It's it's a lucky card game, and that's fine, you know. Hence, you play twice, I think, to even out that luck. But, um, yeah, it's pretty swingy. You, you get what you get in this one. My main issue, having said all that now, my main issue with this game is that you don't do a lot. And by that, I mean the scores are pretty low, Ultimately, you feel like you build up and build up and build up and a crocodile eats everything and you set reset back to zero And then you build up over here and now you're gonna diversify So you put through you know two over here and one over here and those two get eaten and you get one animal through After having played a third of the game and it's just not enough happens. I'm not I don't feel like I'm getting enough uh, Reward maybe maybe that's the problem the game does not feel like it rewards you enough and it's certainly very mean. You are going to be destroying other people's work, actively doing that. And so if you're someone that doesn't like being picked on, you're going to hate this setting and this uh, concept. And even if you're if you are okay with that, you're still going to feel like, man, I don't get to do a whole lot in this game. That's my main issue with it. So I don't hate the game, but I'm also not excited by it. It's one that I think um, there's too many other card games like this that simply are more engaging, are more exciting, give you a little more oomph for your time investment than this one. So um, if you're particularly captivated with it and you see one maybe on the cheap, you could give it a try, but I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to snag a copy of this one. There's lots of better ones, even from this company, lots of better card games. So give those a try instead. All right, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.